Hello. Today I am going to show you how to sign Bitcoin transactions, securely, without using a hardware wallet. Pen and Cat, recorded a 20 video series, whose purpose was to teach you how, and why, you should use, above all other methods, a cold card wallet to store your Bitcoin. Certainly above all other hardware wallets. So, why even consider signing without a hardware wallet? I am not implying, that this is a better way of going about transacting with Bitcoin. It arguably isn't. That's not the point though. Hardware wallets might not be the best solution for everyone, at all times, nor under all circumstances. Who's to say that the mere possession of a Bitcoin specific device, won't make you an immediate target in some jurisdictions, or when crossing a border in the near future. Or perhaps, for some unforeseen reason, hardware wallets are not available to you anymore, and you are forced to migrate to another storage solution. You might also end up caught in a jurisdiction, where the possession of hardware wallets gets criminalized, and they become either difficult to get, or too stressful to hold. Or you just don't trust hardware wallets, and want to do it another way. Whatever your circumstance may be, I hope that this video will help develop your thinking about the issue. So please, don't play with your Bitcoin storage if you don't have to, and do so only if you know exactly what you're doing. All the tools available to you, are there for you to make your Bitcoin even more censorship resistant and less seizable, not the other way around. It is your choice, and your responsibility. Don't fuck it up. Okay. This needed to be said. Now I'll show you what I'm about to do. I will start with two brand new USB drives. I will flash them both with the Linux Tails operating system, following the Tails developer's recommendation for maximum security. Which is not how you will have seen me do this in the past. I will boot Tails 0 on a computer that has no hard drive, and no Wi-Fi, nor Bluetooth card. A computer that will never, ever, be connected to the internet. I will enable Electrum, on the persistent storage, and create a Bitcoin wallet. Then, I will boot Tails 1, from a regular computer. I will also persist the Electrum wallet. And I will create a watch wallet derived from the one I created in Tails 0. By importing the public key, using a QR code. Electrum Wallet will connect over Tor, to an Electrum server, preferably my own. With this setup, I can already receive Bitcoin while watching my balances. If I need to spend, Tails 1 will create a transaction, and Tails 0 will sign it, with the aid of partially signed Bitcoin transactions, over QR codes. The Electrum server will forward the signed transaction to my node, where it will be broadcasted into the Bitcoin network. Let's begin. I will download the Linux Tails operating system image, and verify its digital signature. Okay. I am going to follow the Tails developer's best practice advice, for flashing the Tails operating system into a USB drive. First, I will create an intermediary Tails bootable USB drive. From the image file that I've just downloaded. If I insert a USB drive into my PC, type the same command again, and compare both outputs, I will know which file represents my USB device. Please, make sure to unmount any existing partitions on this device before moving on. I will now flash the image with the copy command. It will take a while. Next, boot tails from this USB drive.
I am on my Linux daily driver, and not on my offline machine. Nevertheless, I've just disconnected the Wi-Fi card, and unplugged the Ethernet cable from my router. Blocking access to the Internet when not needed, is a good rule of thumb to follow in these situations. So let's securely create our first Tails USB drive. Go to Tails Installer. Insert a brand new USB drive. And click Install. Finished. Label the USB drive that you just flashed, as, Tails Zero. And repeat the same process with another brand new USB drive. Label this new USB drive, as, Tails 1. Now shut down, and get rid of the intermediary USB drive. You won't need it anymore. Now that you have both bootable USB drives ready, I need to emphasize the following. You will have guessed by now, that Tails 0, must only be used to boot on your offline computer. If at any point you stop using this setup, or the USB device itself fails, you will proceed to physically destroy it. The same applies to the offline computer. These devices must never interact with other electronics, only with each other. You will use Tails 1, to boot on your online PC. Don't use this Tails OS for anything else either. There is a lot of FUD about air-gapped computers, but they are extremely safe if you can follow two simple rules. 1. Religiously stick to their designated use case. And 2. Destroy them after they've fulfilled their function. In a matter of minutes, you can turn an extremely cheap 20-year-old computer, into an air gap device. Ok. So let's set up Tails Zero, using my offline computer. First I will create a persistent storage, and allow my Electrum Wallet data directory to persist across sessions. Applications Tails Configure persistent volume It is crucial that you choose a strong passphrase Unlocking my persistent storage will make all the changes to the Electrum data directory persistent Let's run Electrum, and create a standard Bitcoin wallet. You know the drill. No screenshots. No pictures. Just pen and paper. Since this wallet file will be stored inside an encrypted volume, you can encrypt the wallet, or not. Passwords on passwords might feel good, but they don't really add anything. As long as the password to decrypt the persistent volume is strong and safely stored, you'll be fine. Anyway, this cannot hurt. Great. We have an Electrum wallet. Print to screen its public key QR code. I will leave this Tails 0 session going, while I move to my regular computer, and boot from Tails 1. I don't need to connect to the internet yet. To avoid confusion, every time I boot from Tails 1, I will change the default background. So let's enable Electrum in the persistent storage, and reboot. Unlock your persistent storage. And just this once, Provide an administration password so I can show you something cool.
Before I set up a watch wallet in Electrum, I want to make sure that I connect only to my node, thus keeping my public key, private. I already have an Electrum server listening on a Tor hidden service, whose onion address I need, if I'm to connect to it. The question is, how to get that address into this computer. I could write it in a file and bring it to this machine, on a USB drive. But I'm not going to do that, because even though this is my online computer, I want to minimize the contact with any foreign electronic device. I am going to get it using QR codes. There's a better and a worse solution to accomplish this. Just for educational purposes, I am going to do it the wrong way, because I want to show you a specific feature of Linux Tails. But don't worry, when I'm done, you will understand why and how to do this in the most secure way possible. So, I need to find a way to decode the text embedded in a QR code. The obvious solution is to install some additional software. To do this entails, first you need to update your sources. This is the main reason, why this wouldn't be my preferred solution to solve our specific issue, precisely because I need to install additional packages. Another good rule of thumb, when dealing with setups where security is a priority, don't install additional software, if you don't have to. But in Linux Tails, as you shall see in a moment, we can do something else. Install ZBar Dash Tools. Now, read that notification banner. This is why Linux Tails is so cool. Since I don't have the additional software feature enabled on my persistent storage, this package will be installed only once, during this session. When I shut down or reboot, all the changes to the system that occurred because of it, will be forgotten. It is an excellent compromise. The file that represents the camera in your laptop is either one of these two. Probably the first one. So, I have SSH'd into my server from one of my computers, and printed to screen the onion address of the hidden service for the Electrum server, encoded into a QR code. With the following command, here, in Tails 1, I will accomplish the reverse operation. It will decode and print to screen, the text embedded into any QR code that my camera captures. So here I go. I will keep my Tails 1 laptop, steady in front of the screen showing the QR code, and run the command. And there it is. Isn't that cool? I will copy the address, and edit the Electrum Wallet configuration file. Tweaking the options, one server, and auto-connect, I make sure that I will only connect to my node. I am ready to run Electrum now. Standard Wallet. Use a master key. Now I need to provide the public key of the wallet I created in Tails 0. Either in text form, or encoded into a QR code. I will scan the screen of my Tails 0 computer. And I got it. Before I go on, let me go back to my comments about installing the minimum amount of additional software. I hope that you can see, that Electrum already has an implementation of QR code decoding software, so my installing the ZBar tools was totally unnecessary. I could have just run Electrum, scan whatever QR code I wanted, copy the decoded text, and exit Electrum. Check this out. This is a nice little hack that you should remember. But hey, at least I got to show you how the additional software feature works in Linux Tails. For educational purposes only, let's move on. Read that. I am connected to my Electrum server, over Tor. I will change the base unit to SOTS and show my wallet's addresses in a tab. And finally, I will reboot Tails 1, 
to make sure that my Electrum data directory is indeed persisted. Everything is as I left it. Before starting transacting, please wait until your Electrum client catches up with the server. Look at the field, blockchain, up there. It should match the server's block height, down below. Ok. I am going to send some SOTs to the first address of this wallet. 10,000 SOTs, at 2 satoshis per byte. Got it. I'll wait for confirmation. So, I already have a few confirmations on this output. Now pay close attention. I am going to spend it. I'll go for 2 sites per byte. To create a partially signed Bitcoin transaction, click, Export. Show as, QR code. To sign this transaction, I will move to my offline computer, and boot from Tails Zero. Tools. Load transaction. From QR code. Scan the Tails 1 screen. Check the details. And sign the transaction. To get the signed PSBT, click on, Export. Show as QR code. Move to Tails 1. You can cancel the details of the transaction. To import the signed PSBT, go to, Tools. Load transaction from QR code and scan the Tails 0 screen Finally, broadcast the transaction Shut down Tails 0 Congratulations! You've signed a Bitcoin transaction offline, without a hardware wallet A word of advice about updating the Tails 1 USB drive. Please, read the Tails instructions for upgrading securely. I'll leave a link in the description. Regarding Tails 0, you don't have to update it. Keep that device, and your offline computer, perpetually offline, and totally segregated from any other electronic device. If at any point in time you want to change your storage solution, move your Bitcoin to another private keys, and thoroughly destroy, the Tails Zero USB drive, and the offline computer. It will be so much fun.